So now that we know the basics of thick skin, let's have, find a little bit of something funner to play with. I'm gonna hit the comma key up here. And by default, if you have uh, going to projects and go in here to demo projects, you're gonna see there's a new demo Greyhound. So let's go ahead and double click that, say no. And there we go. It's gonna give you a little spiel here. It's gonna say, select the thick skin clay brush, modify the thick skin amount, which you already know how to do, and swap out some alphas. So let's go ahead and do that. There's actually a couple things turned on in here as well. To go down here to render preview AO, it's got occlusion turned on, which is kind of neat. And in fact, if you hit BPR, there's a radial filter being applied. We'll get to all that later. But on this one, what I want you to see is that we opened this project and this project was saved months ago or weeks ago. Um, however, when the project was saved, thick skin was turned on for this object here. So it still has those original vert positions stored. And if you want to verify that, take this thick skin thickness amount down to zero for all intents and purposes, go into any brush, let's say clay buildup. And now as we use clay buildup, it'll brush away all the work that was done uh, on this dog originally. So that's something to keep in mind. If you have an object and you're going in here and you're brushing uh, with brushes on this object and you store thick skin, as long as you save either your project or tool save as Z tool or file save as Z project, it'll keep that thick skin vert position stored because that button's gonna just stay on. So it's gonna be stored with the tool essentially. So you can hand it to somebody else, you can open it up later and that'll still be in there. Now, it's a little precarious if you ever turn this off and then turn it back on again, you're not gonna be able to brush back because again, it stored those new vert positions, which is this now. So everything else has been lost. So now if I go in here to thickness and crank this up and then use clay build up, it's going to take these already kind of blobby surfaces and just kind of use clay build up on there or these smoother surfaces and use clay build up on there. Now the eagle eyes among you may notice that when I'm using this clay build up when we have the thick skin, let's go ahead and crank that up to, you know, let's do our default 20 here. It's going to behave like the clay build up brush. It's going to kind of obliterate that underlying detail until it hits that 20 cap. And then it's going to take those original vert position uh, kind of that craggy surface, and then it's gonna project it or move it right up to that cap. So if I go through here and just kind of do very quickly, just use that clay buildup brush, it's taking all this original, like right here you can see, there's some nice deep crags in there. Well, first your clay buildup brush is gonna obliterate that, but once it hits that cap, it's gonna move that detail outwards. Same thing if you hold down Alt, it's gonna go in until it hits that cap, and then it's gonna look like, oh, there's a little sculpture of a blobby dog underneath this. And all it's really doing is taking those original vert positions, moving it down 20 based on the type of brush that you're using. So again, as long as you don't hit that cap, it's gonna behave just like the clay buildup brush until you hit that cap and then it's gonna move that original detail either in 20 by holding down Alt or out 20 by Z adding that. So let's take our undo slider and go all the way back to the left. So this is just you know how we open this project up basically. And let's go ahead and do what the project said, which is going here to BT, thick skin clay, BTS. So now we have a new thick skin clay brush and it's got freehand stroke and a brush alpha in here. And you're gonna you know, set your thickness to five, which is the default uh, when you open up the project. So that's gonna tell it, go ahead and use this brush, but only allow it to affect my mesh up or down by holding down alt or letting go of alt, five units away and you're gonna see the the way this brush is kind of set up it gives us a very nice like I'm kind of smearing clay around the surface of my object and in fact if I just kind of wiggle the brush on there kind of leaves a little circle in there and you can kind of get a little indication of you know maybe how this brush started and in fact if we crank this thickness way up and start using it you're gonna see this is actually a pretty destructive brush like it's doing crazy stuff to my mesh and it's allowing it to do that because I've set it up to 100. So it's got quite a, a large threshold before it hits that cap. So you might be saying like, oh my God, why would you ever use this brush? Well, this brush is pretty crazy. However, as soon as you limit its effectiveness by you know dropping this down to five, all of a sudden that crazy brush turns into kind of a neat, kind of a smeary brush. And this is where your experimentation is gonna kick in. You're gonna, there's a ton of cool things a ZBrush can do, manipulating verts in all sorts of ways, and you can use it in conjunction with this thick skin. For example, if you wanna recreate this brush, let's go out, out of edit mode here, let's say always switch, hit Control N to clear a canvas. Let's go all the way back up here to our tool palette. 
And you know what? Let's just go back to our Sphere 3D, drag it on our canvas, go into edit mode, make poly mesh 3D, and geometry, dynamesh, turn blur down to zero, turn on dynamesh. So now you can see we have a nice dynamesh sphere here. And again, you can turn on X symmetry. There's nothing stopping us from doing that. So here's our clay brush. We don't have thick skin turned on yet. So again, it's doing that super destructive thing. Go down here, thick skin, turn it on, set it to five. Boom. Now we got a nice smeary clay brush here. So let's recreate this. Let's go in here to BG. Let's go in here to brush groom turbulence. So BGU. And this is our turbulence brush. Again, let's turn off thick skin. Here you see it's going nuts on our object here. That's because number one, it's got spray stroke. So it's kind of spraying this kind of scraggy alpha all over our mesh. Now that's also interesting too, you know, changing your brush stroke and your alpha is going to give you a much different effect of even, even within the same brush. So in fact, let's go ahead and switch this out. Let's choose alpha 58 instead of a spray stroke. You choose dots or freehand. And now as we're doing that, whoa, it's, it's, it's really affecting those verts. Well, we know uh, in ZBrush, if you want to decrease the amount that or the effect that your brush has. Number one, you can turn on thick skin now that you know how to do that. But you can also just lower that Z intensity. There we go. So now it's it's kind of mushing our clay around, but boy, it's really just doing too much. Well, now we know we can go over here to thick skin, limit the effect of this clay. And if we want to, you know, let's crank it up a little bit, maybe 13, give us a little bit more wiggle room. And now we can go through here and get kind of a slidey clay look. And again, how you're seeing this uh, really well is in this particular project underneath render here, uh, we do have our preview AO turned on, so it's kind of giving us a little more oomph in, uh, in the darks here. So you're getting that real screen space AO uh, happening. And like I mentioned before, even as something as simple as swapping out the alpha is going to have a different look. So we go back to that scraggy alpha, the alpha 60. You're going to get a much different look. Now, again, we don't have a ton of resolution on our topology here. So if we want to, we can crank up that dynamis resolution or subdivide, but we're going to lose that thick skin. So if you want to get rid of this, remember, you can undo, you can drag your undo slider back or go to thick skin of zero. You can say, go back to clay build up and just do a real quick pass. Put those verts back where they were originally. Let's crank our thickness back up here. Actually turn thickness skin off. Let's crank up our dynamis resolution. And again, control drag. If it doesn't do anything, just hold on shift and just smooth it just a little bit and control drag. It'll update it. Turn off polyframe. Turn thick skin back on, set it to whatever depth or height you want. You can go back to your brush groom turbulence, or since we already know how it was made, you can go back here to BTS, the thick skin clay, same thing. Go in here, you can choose a square alpha. That's the result you're gonna get. If you choose a the alpha 60 scraggy alpha, you get a little bit more of a scratchy look. Maybe alpha 30, give you a little bit more tooth. Alpha 61, ooh, look at that, that's kinda nice. That's a, that's a kind of a nice, smooth, slidey feel here. Again, just gives you a little bit more texture on there. So again, same brush, thick skin clay, but now you know how to make that. Same stroke, just swapping out the alpha gets you a different look.